And hello and welcome to part number 33 of my Let's Play of Planet Zoo. Okay guys, so in the previous part we put in some lovely overlords, I mean, um, <coughs> llamas. And uh, our new gods are doing quite nicely in the zoo, especially Cusco. I'll hail Cusco. <coughs> what? Anyway, <laughs> I might be a little llama obsessed, don't mind me. Anywho, uh, we are going to be putting in a new species this part, as we always do. And in this particular one, we are going to be adding in the giant anteaters, which are from South America. And they also came with the South America DLC. So if you don't have them in your game, that might be why. If you don't have that DLC, obviously you're not going to have them. But if you've got the DLC, you should have them in your own game as well. And once we have them added, that will conclude the um, South American section of the zoo. And then we'll just have to basically fill in the gaps for the rest of this uh, series for this particular franchise zoo. And as we fill in those gaps, we're going to add in animals like the hyenas, the nyala, I think they're called. They're some kind of antelope thing from Africa. And a few other different species like that, including rhinoceroses. And basically, once we've got all of the hot weather animals that I want to put in the zoo, which is almost all of them, the only ones I know for a fact I'm leaving out are the bonobos. And that's just because they're super similar to chimpanzees. So I feel almost like putting them in would be a little redundant in the same park, because we're not doing a primate exclusive park or anything like that. I didn't really feel like adding in bonobos. But um, they're the only one I'm leaving out for this. And I hope you're all cool with that. If you're not cool with that and you want me to add bonobos, do let me know and of course I will add them. Because I do like them, they're fine. Oh god, oh no, what's happening? Why am I having 30 million notifications? Who escaped? Um... No. No, you have not escaped. You are still in your habitat. WTF. Oh, let's call the vet on this flamingo who's definitely not escaped, but is supposedly escaped. Game, you're being dumb right now. <laughs> game, why are you being so dumb right now? No. No game, no. The dude has not escaped. I mean, there's literally other flamingos right in front of him. Who <laughs> is not counting his escaped. Oh, gosh. What is going on? There's like an announcement going around saying that a dangerous animal has escaped. Or no, just an animal, okay. I was gonna say, if it counts a freaking flamingo as dangerous, its standards are a little cuckoo. Okay, good, it just realized that he's not escaped, actually. Because this is reality, people, okay? And in reality, he's not escaped! <laughs> oh my god. But let's see now, um, over here we have Llama Land, and we shall go hail our Llama Gods before we add in the, um, Anteaters. Where is Cusco? He is the king, because of his name, even though his statistics are absolutely dreadful. I mean, look at this Llama. Look at this glorious Llama. Look at this! This is terrible! His size is okay, but everything else is garbage. But that's okay, we love him anyway. We don't care that his stats are a bit dodgy. We love our llama god, and look at how smug his face is. Good gracious. <laughs> oh man, I love how he has the shelter right behind him in this screenshot that I just took. That's probably going to be the um, thumbnail for the previous part. <laughs> oh, Cusco. Bless you, Cusco. Okay, now that Cusco has blessed us with his presence, let's go in the Anteaters. I'm going to give you guys a really quick update. You remember how in the previous part we lost one of our pangolins to old age? I got a mate for our um, just aged up into an adult pangolin, so we're good there now. Okay, who all needs to be sold still? I have three lions who need them. We're keeping Mwamba, Bakari, 
and Zade. Good luck, guys. Hopefully you get uh, new homes soon. Okay, I'm dumb. I completely forgot to open up the um, thingy for the anteaters and put them in quarantine before I forget yet again. Let's see. Uh, the anteaters are right here. We have Diego and Benedita. Cool names. I like them. I like them. Okay, let's put you two in quarantine, which is over here. Okay. We put the first anteater in quarantine. And now to put in... Oh my gosh, my neck is cracking! Um, and now to put in the second one. Benedita. Whose stats are dreadful, but that's okay. We love her anyway. I've noticed that a lot of the time for the first um, members of a species that I add to the zoo, they end up having poor stats. And then later on, I'm able to get ones that have better stats generally, but we'll see. Because when I originally got those anteaters, they just come out, and so it was incredibly expensive to get ones from other players. So I just got one from, ones from Frontier, which were way cheaper, and I think I actually got them for, like, actual in-game cash versus for CC. Okay, so one thing I remember about the anteaters is that they like... Plenty of grass. <gasps> the llama's about to mate! Wait, we are waiting for the llamas to mate! That would crack me up so hard. <laughs> Make baby llamas, please. Make cute little baby llamas. All hail the llama gods. I'm sorry if that running gag is annoying anybody at this point, but dang nabbit! It amuses the heck out of me and I love llamas. I mean, you're all lucky at this point that I have not broken out into the llama song. Because I could do the whole thing. I could. And I am going to refrain for the sake of your, your sanities. Uh. Let's see here. So far it doesn't say that she's pregnant. But, let's see who she mated with. Current mate none. Oh, it just simply hasn't registered yet. Was it Cusco? Or was it somebody else? I will still love you, Llama, if it wasn't Cusco. Yes, it was Cusco! <laughs> Happy day, it was Cusco. I don't think that he got her pregnant, though, because good lord, look at his fertility. It is, it is garbage! Oh my god, he did succeed. Never mind. Oh! My baby elephant just grew up. Or, um, she does not mate with her father. Because her father is the only bull elephant in the herd. And he's back there. But yeah, let's watch her mature into an adult. God, I love elephants. Holy moly! That was the most intense maturation I have ever witnessed. <laughs> Dang. Okay. Are, do I have two llamas by the same name? Do I have two llamas by... Okay, no. They're almost... They're very similar names for someone like me who's a little bit derpy and doesn't know um, at all, anything about the language that their names are coming from, really. But, yeah, let's see. Yanta, you're gonna be a daddy. Cusco gonna be a daddy. God bless you, Cusco. Yes, he gonna be a daddy llama. We're gonna have eight llamas. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the terrain in for the giant anteaters. And let's see, let's start with the soil that we're gonna put back here so that the guests don't have to see the ugly soil. It's not, it's not ugly, really, but I don't like... It doesn't look as nice to me, personally. That could just be my opinion and my thoughts, though. Also, for those of you who also play this game, please let me know in the comments section down below if you happen to play a desert zoo and if your guests get super thirsty super easily. Because I've noticed that in my own zoos. 
and I've heard of other players who have had a significant amount of trouble with getting their guests to not be super thirsty all the time if they're in a desert zoo. And if you manage to keep your guests well hydrated in a desert zoo, let me know how you manage that and basically what measures you had to take. Especially because I could use some advice too myself, because if you'll notice, my interest and the hunger and energy aren't the best either. But the thirst is the big one there. So I really need to improve that for them. And I would like to make it so that my guests don't collapse from dehydration because I live in this kind of climate in real life, although it looks a little bit more like scrubland than flat out sand everywhere. Because of that, I know firsthand just how thirsty one can get from being in such a dry environment. So if that is something that they did indeed put into the game, as I do suspect, that is amazing and so cool. I am so glad that they did that, if that really is a thing like I think it is. Let's see, let's pull the dirt over this way. Because I remember they need a decent amount of dirt. So I'm going to just cover this back area here a little bit. And then let's make it so that we can actually see what in the world the difference is by putting in... Also, if there are any other kind of Planet Zoo videos you guys want me to do or you would like to see from me, let me know in the comments section because I am all ears for making new kinds of Planet Zoo content rather than just the let's... If you want me to do reviews of different things, if you want me to give my opinion on what should be added to the game, what could be improved, that sort of thing, let me know, and I will be very happy to make that kind of content for you. Because I've actually been thinking about doing that for a while, and I have something in the works that will be coming out hopefully within a week or two. We shall see, though, dependent on how much time I get, because I'm in university, for those who don't know, and even though it's summer right now, I'm taking summer classes. So I don't have infinite time right now or anything, <laughs> even though it's summer. Okay, long grass. Pretty long grass is what we're going to put up against the fence here, against the barrier. I'm going to make sure that it's nice and thick so that the actual grass shows up properly and you can actually see it. Let's see, did I do that? Yeah, I did. Cool. Also, I've been having issues with sandbox mode where the game will just crash at random after me playing for just a few minutes, so I submitted a bug report. Hopefully they get that fixed. And, uh, yeah, I'll update you guys once that has anything to update on. Because in order to film a video that I plan on doing sometime soonish, I kind of need to have a sandbox zoo to use for background footage. And, uh, the one I was trying to build for that just isn't working because it keeps crashing. And so have every other sandbox zoo I've been trying to make lately, so that's a problem. There we are. Perfect! I filled that in and made it look all nice and grassy. And since I'm paranoid about crashes these days, I am saving the zoo. Oh, goodness. Let me take a quick sip of water here so I don't get dehydrated IRL. Ah, perfect. Saving your zoo. Please wait. Zoom. Okay. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. I need to give them a shelter. So let's go to architecture. Let's see, what kind of architecture have I used for the buildings around us? I've used lots of the red shelter roof, like the red roof. So I'm going to use that again, and I'm going to use this theme as well. That brick. Let's see what it looks like. Brick. Is that the stone brick? I'm not sure. No, I believe it's the temple wall, actually. Temple. Yep, 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 it's the temple wall. Okay. Ooh. 
Okay, I'm gonna put their shelter back over here. And then we're gonna put this like this. Okay, it doesn't need to be very big because there's only going to be at most like three anteaters in here at a time. Because the um, anteaters prefer to have just two of them in the habitat and then whatever children they might have. And they're not that big, so I'm not going to make this shelter giant. I am accidentally going to make it on the wrong part of the uh, grid, however. <gasps> Whoops. <gasps> fixed it, I fixed it. And they're very short, so I just added that. There we go. Yeah, they're certainly not a giraffe or anything height-wise. <laughs> oh no! There we go. Okay, let's make this habitat sparkling. Dag nabbit. There we go. Okay, so roofs and floors. I don't want the temple walls for this. For this, my darlings, we are going to get the red painted one. This one. Okay, I don't need the inverted corner, I need the normal corner. Um... What? Why is it not going down to the proper level? What is happening? Grid height, 2 meters maybe. Maybe that'll fix it. Yeah, that fixed it. Okay, good. There we are. It was weird! I have never had that happen before that I can recall. And I feel like I would remember that. Do, do, do. Okay. Alright, yeah, we don't need that to do that. We will probably need this, though, in the middle. Do, do, do. Okay. Is that the right height? I think so. Yeah, there we go. We're good. We're good. We're good. Unless that's a little bit up. I think, yeah, that's actually a little up. Oh, that's gonna bother me. Oh, not that far down! <laughs> oh god, why? There. Okay. Let's fix this one. There, we're making this look so much better now, you guys. So much better. Oh, I'm gonna need to lower this a little bit. These, rather. Because they need to be, like, right on par there. And I think we're good now. Except this one looks like it's too low because of freaking course. There, okay, we've got the roof done. Now I just need to go back to the walls. Type in temple. And then I need these little gables here. Put that right there. That is good. Oh god, don't crash game. Okay, good. It was just being a little bit slow. Whew. That scared me, you guys! It did me one hecking scare. Okay, Props, general, okay, where is the letter A? There it is. I think we can actually go ahead and use the large ones, because I'm going to write the word anteaters. Yeah. A. N. T. 
Kiki. Whoever came up with the name for this species was just so creative. <laughs> what are they eating? Ants! Oh, they're ant eaters. Uh, okay. That's like calling humans like burger and ice cream eaters or something like that. Ant ears. <laughs> oh my god, what have I done? <laughs> I was not paying attention to what I was doing. I was paying too much attention to what I was saying. <gasps> Eat. Errs. There we go. I love putting the name of the animal on the name on their shelter. That just I think it looks really nice. Okay. Let's put this fake vine thingy. Let's put it like I want to put it like right there. Or so and then let's have it go up to about here. And I apologize if you just heard my phone go off. I completely forgot to turn it off sound-wise. Whoops. Okay, that's a smaller one. That makes more sense. I wish there was a way to size things up if you really wanted to. Like, for example, I wish that I could make this vine thing be as tall as up here, like I'm mousing over. That would be much more ideal, I think. Okay. Anyway. Their shelter looks pretty good now. Actually, let's let's add some more little leaves, just for some decoration. Do, do. Here we are. Perfect. Okay. And I would add a little thing of an anteater down here, but they don't have one in the game. And I don't want to take three billion years to create one. Let's make sure it's spelled right. A-N-T-E-A-T-E-R-S. Okay, good. We're, we're fine. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Habitat. Anteater. Doggy ball, first of all. Let's put that over there. And then a forage box enrichment. They should really like that. And a large ball that looks like a soccer ball. Otherwise known as a football to those of you in other countries. And this is the plant screen, which they will use for privacy, of course. And then over here we can give them the slow feeder bowl, the scratching post, and a rubbing pad that I will put up against a tree. And then let's put their water actually, yeah, let's put it over by their shelter. Because that's what I like to do best, is to put the water by the shelter so that they can drink in peace. Now where? <sighs> hmm. Where is the termite mound? It's not showing up. Termite mound. It doesn't say that they like termite mounds? What? Uh... Content pack. South America pack. Everything. Uh, where is it? There should be a termite mound thing meant specifically for the anteaters. But I am not seeing it anywhere in this. Maybe I just haven't unlocked it yet, that's right. I completely forgot. <laughs> I've been playing Sandbox too much. Or I've been having too much that's available already and forgetting that there's some things that aren't always available right away this franchise. Whoops. I bet half of you guys were like, you're playing a franchise, dummy! <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 
Ooh, I'm gonna make this look so lush. It's gonna be divine. Okay. That was almost an exact replica of the way that that was looking. So I'm gonna put these in here. And then there's gonna be... Mm, do I want a Brazil nut tree? Yeah, there's some big trees over in the monkey habitat next door. So we'll add in these Brazil nut trees. That are absolutely freaking enormous! Good lord. And then the custard apple trees are going to be really great for making the place look a lot more lush. Because they're so thick and full. And another thing I like to do is to take the kapok trees that so many of the animals like. I'm going to zoom out a bunch. And then make that basically look like it's just various brush rather than a tree. So that looks now like it's some giant bushes. Okay. Put that there. More custard apple trees. Because these are a tropical animal that likes the rainforest. So because of that, we can easily add in a lot of stuff for them and they'll be happy. Okay. I'm gonna right over here add. And now to put in a bunch of Terramund trees. Because these are awesome and very pretty and I like them. Do Wimba tree. Wimba tree. Oh my god, no, don't no, put it on top of that! <gasps> huh? No! Do not align the tree to the surface. Don't do... Okay, maybe do align it to the surface because that looks even weirder. Tree's on its side there for some reason. It's like, uh... Okay. Okay, now yellow trees for a splash of some color. There we go. There, that looks absolutely lovely. And let's see, we need to add some rocks so that it's more realistic. So let's go ahead and put some rocks in. I'm gonna put this one right there where it's kind of in the shade. And then that one, I'm gonna sink into the sand a little bit, or the dirt rather. And this one can just go there. And then for these, these came with the South America pack. So I can safely put these flowers around the rock and the anteaters will like it. Okay, lobster claw. Let's put that big one over there. And at a different angle, put that one there. Because one thing that I have learned actually from playing The Sims and rocks and things look nice, you should always move them to a slight- oops, don't do what I just did there and make them float in the air- but you should move them to a slight angle when you put them down versus when you put down the very first one. So for example here I'm gonna put in these at the base of this tree. Not quite right at the base of the tree though. But if you'll note I'm holding down the Z key and by doing so I'm moving it so that it's at a different angle. And I'm doing that so- and also vary which ones you use size-wise as well. Because in real life, of course, plants are going to reproduce and when they do, there's going to be little baby plants near them. So like that, we have some grown plants and we have some baby plants. But yeah, that's my two cents on how to make things look nice as far as like decorating your habitats are concerned. There's other people out there who are much better at it than I am, but I- <laughs> Okay, save the zoo. Take another drink, and then I'm gonna unpause it and- Out of quarantine! It's refreshing water. 
Oh, wait a minute. It's January year 34. That means that I think one of my lions is due to give birth. Let's see. Yeah, they haven't done so yet, but I believe I have a lion that's going to give birth soon. Let's see. Also, this area here is absolutely huge. Should I put more habitats between this and this? Or should I put in more rest areas? Like, I put in a mini one over here by the monkeys. Hmm. Because there's a rest area right here. So I'm not really sure exactly what I want to do with that, but we'll see. Where's Cusco? Is he doing Cusco things and thinking Cusco thoughts? Forever. Probably. There's Cusco. Hey, Cusco. Nice tail. Why is the game not pausing when I'm pressing P? I wanted to pause. Oh. Now he looks weird. Oh, well. Oh, we have a lemur about to mature. It's a little girl. It's a girl! As soon as she does mature, we're going to go ahead and put birth control on her. Because I can almost guarantee you that her father is the um, main male. Let me double check for sure, though. Yes. Okay. So many siblings. Okay. Oh no, who's diseased? Oh no, the peafowl. Not again. Not freaking again. Why does the peafowl habitat always get so nasty? Ugh. If anyone has suggestions on how I can keep my peafowl habitat from getting super nasty, do let me know. Down below. Or if you're in my Discord server, you can also tell me there. That works too. Um, if you're not in my Discord server, you absolutely should be. I know I brought it up in the last part too, but I'm going to keep talking about it until more people join because it is awesome. I want you all there that badly. <laughs> Why is the habitat cleanliness always becoming a disease risk for the freaking peafowls? Oh good, we learned a little bit about llamas. Other than that they are our gods, apparently. In case you're wondering and you didn't see my South America DLC review, the reason I keep going on about the llamas, other than the fact I love them, is because of the fact that the dev team actually created a temple in-game. And that temple- oh, they're swimming! My tigers are enjoying the weather by swimming. How cute. But... Over here, let's see, yeah, over here, here it is. The only thing I added to this glorious creation was the jaguar on top because I put it in the jaguar habitat as well as these little vines. But yeah, it already came with the llama statues on the top and it looks like it's a shrine to llamas in my opinion. Because it is a temple and it has llama gods on top. So that's why I keep going on about llama gods. <laughs> you can blame the dev team! Okay, a titan beetle had offspring. I'm speeding up the game because I don't want to sit here for 5,000 years waiting for the- OH NO! For the gazelle to croak, apparently. We're about to lose our, one of our gazelles. Oh no! Oh no! It said that she was about to die, but... She's still with us at the moment. As soon as she stops walking, she's probably going to collapse, though. Hi, beautiful. Oh god, there she goes. She's making the noise. She's doing the weird dance. And thud. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Ahsok. Or Ahsoki. I'm really not sure how to say your name. There we go. Okay, a vet's en route. Good. Oh, noes. Esmeralda gave birth. Oh, that's a pretty name. I like. Okay, a flamingo's going to give birth again. 
Oh good, somebody passed quarantine. That would be Diego. And we're going to hang out over here until Benedita passes as well. Passes quarantine, that is not passes away, good lord. <gasps> uh, okay. Good. Okay, Diego, Benedita, are you two ready to do the most awesomest of giant anteater things? You better be. Alrighty. So, in the next part, we'll actually finally be able to building new habitats that haven't already been laid out yet, so that's exciting. Lush enough for my liking. Yeah, it definitely looks lush enough for my liking. Good. Okay. Let's see, how lush is it anyways? 51% coverage. So hopefully they really like short grass, are okay with long grass and like soil. Because if that's the case, we're golden. Because that's how the terrain is set up at the moment. But let's wait for them to enter their habitat and then get vet research going. It is lag city. Oh yeah, I'm going to save really quick. And I'm going to test something. I have heard that the game is more stable and runs a bit better if it's in full screen mode than if it's in borderless, and I currently have it in borderless because I like being able to very easily switch between my screens without having to um, press any buttons. But let's see if that fixes the slowness in any way. Applying. Oh god, everything went black! Oh no! Right. That does not quite look right. And I think that might have killed my recording. Please god tell me that did not kill my recording. That was stupid. Uh, game? Hello? Game? Recording? Hello? I'm gonna put it back to borderless. Cause I don't like this. Oh my god, why is it freezing? Oh no. I'm probably gonna have to edit it out. Oh thank god, it's still recording. Okay, good. I'm switching back to borderless. Because full screen was not working because I've got two monitors. <laughs> oh, the lemur matured. Why are we switching to es Esmeralda the frog? That No. Jafar is about to age up. But is he going to screw over Aladdin? That's the real question. <laughs> well. Okay, Winzip trial, don't pop up in the corner, please. Thank goodness it didn't record that, because that would be really weird. Alright, you guys, so I'm not exactly sure what in the world happened, but apparently that pop-up caused my sound to crash, and so I'm recording this little bit of audio way after I actually recorded this video, and so the rest of the video has no commentary, and I apologize for that. I will make sure to figure out how to stop that kind of pop-up from happening in the future and to fix the audio issues. But in the meanwhile, I'll have some lovely music to watch while we, or to listen to rather, while we finish the part up.
here. I hope that you've all enjoyed it. Please be sure to give it a like, leave a comment, and to use the links on screen in order to subscribe to my channel, support my Patreon campaign, watch more content from me, and then be sure to go over to the description of the video where you can find all my social media links, including the one to my glorious Discord server, Raylunil's Army. I hope to see you all there and in the next video.